Hey, welcome to Quest ALTV. Today we're going to build the Millennium Falcon uh, from Star Wars. Uh, now I went to uh, quite a bit of uh, effort to try and make it as authentic as possible. Uh, we've got some limitations with the way that uh, the ship parts uh, allow us to build in uh, Starfield. And uh, we'll just discuss it as we go. We're going to go to the ship part screen. And we've got a uh, little warning for you guys here. We've got uh, ship inspired by the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars. Expert build. And all I mean by that is you've got to be level 60. You've got to have an outpost ship builder. Piloting for, ship design for. And then you've got to be willing to take a trip to uh, New Homestead for some landing gear and a trip to Neon for the uh, heavy weaponry and uh, engines that we need for this thing. Um, I really tried to calculate the total cost, uh, but <clears throat> comes down to about 493,000 credits total. So uh, it's up to you. Like I always say, make the ship build your own, uh, but here's my version. And let's go to uh, Shoza. It's a uh, nasty rainy day on Shoza. And here we are in our anti-Xeno gear. Let's go to the ship builder and go through it. <clears throat> okay, this time I thought I'd show you guys how I tear apart the ship to uh, show you level by level how to build this thing. So, what you do is you tear it down level by level, and if you just click on one piece and then another, we take that off, we're going to say that's the top part of it. And then go down each level from there. Click on the first piece and then control click all the other pieces that you want to pull off to be separate. Okay. Pull that off there. We forgot our little window. Okay. So let's get to it. So um, I didn't uh, give myself a copy of the ship part, so hopefully this will be along the same lines that I did before, but we'll start with the lander, the Stability Pro landing bay from Stroud Eklund. And then we will attach to that because this landing bay attaches uh, from the back side here. Rather the side of it since this is a side bay. But the uh, Millennium Falcon uh, did board from, from that side. So let's put the Stroud all in one berth right next to that so we know we have a connection. And then we're going to put the Aculander 11 landing gear right here. And now this is uh, just for the time being. We're going to get some better landing gear than this because we're going to increase the cargo for the ship. But there's four times uh, the landing gear there. So that's a total of eight. Then we're going to put a Deimos hull on the front of the Stroud all-in-one berth. I just did that for passenger slots, but you can use any version that you want. And then I put the 10ST hauler shielded cargo hold on the front of that Deimos hull. Now that gives 320 kilos of shielded cargo in case you want to uh, smuggle some goods. We know the best way to do that is just to fly to the den, right, in the wolf system. Because they won't scan you when you come in, and they're happy to unload your uh, artificial intelligence, harvested organs, 
all those sorts of things um, at the den in the wolf system, right? Okay, great. Uh, now let's attach some more habitation here on the next level. Uh, that's going to be the Stroud Control Station. I did that for the crew stations on this one. So, pull that up to there. And then put the porthole 4 on the front of that. Take a couple more habitations here. Stroud living quarters for passenger slots. And Stroud workshops. So you can work on your guns and your spacesuit. Stroud cap B on the port side. Uh, where the landing bay is. And that's the uh, port aft. I think I actually have these reversed so that they have the correct connectors on the outside. And that's the uh, starboard aft. Just their sides are switched there. Okay. Uh, now we're going to take uh, Nova Cowling 2L SF. So yeah, this is the starboard side, four. Uh, so that's the front of the ship, Nova Cowling. And this is the port four version of that. In the middle, we're going to put the Connect Pro docker for starboard side. And this is where the docker was on the Millennium Falcon. On the side. Then we're going to take a Nova Galactic storeroom. And place it on the other side. Just for looks and for looking out, <laughs> we've got a uh, porthole here as well. Now for the front of the ship, I did mess around with the Nova Cowling. Um, I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, but to me, that was just too pointy. So we're going to put instead the Stroud Nose Cap C. The starboard and port versions of it. And you'll see once I get the, uh, the Falcon all built here. Why that was that I did that. Uh, we're going to put the Nova Cowling 2L SA right there. And really, these are our engine mounts. 2L port aft and starboard aft versions of that. And then drop one happy little white dwarf 1000 engine onto one of the sides of that. Okay? So that's great. Now we should be able to double click on this. Take this entire thing and move it back to the center. Where we can keep building. All right. <clears throat> the next piece we can put on is the Stroud nose cap B. That'll fit right on top of this uh, habitation. The other habitations that I put on here were uh, another living quarters and a workshop control station for crew. Okay, and then behind that, uh, another Stroud living quarters. The Millennium Falcon could have uh, up to, I believe, 60 passengers uh, if they forwent some of the some of the cargo. So, for additional cowling, we're going to put the Nova Cowling 1L on the port side and on the starboard side, the four version of that. And I believe those actually go in the front of the Stroud living quarters. Okay, now we're going to connect our cockpit up. We're going to do that by putting a Stroud companionway right here. And then a Nova Galactic computer core next to it. So we're going to attach the Stroud companionway to the Nova Galactic computer core in the back of the computer core here. Then we're going to attach the Daimyo Enhanced Cockpit 
here. And I had originally used the Viking cockpit, but it just didn't look as much uh, like the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon. So I switched it around. Okay, now we're going to get to the uh, nitty gritty here. 900T helium tank. Okay, it goes, it's a two level, two module high helium tank, and it goes with its top connector behind the Stroud Companionway. Right next to that, we're going to use the J52 Gamma Grav Drive, and that has 50 Grav Jump Thrust. For the Millennium Falcon, I wanted it to have all the Grav Jump Thrust that it could possibly need, because it's a hyperspace machine, right? Okay, then we're going to put the SF-40 Sheared Flow Reactor next to that. Now that has uh, 40 generated power and requires Starship Design Rank 4. If you're building the ship and you don't have Starship Design Rank 4, you know, you can put whatever engines you want on here. You could actually make this into a B-class ship if you'd rather. Uh, in front of the Sheared Flow Reactor, I'm putting the Deimos Hull A. And then we're going to put a shield on this thing. This is the Assurance SG-1800 Shield Generator from Sextant Shield Systems, and it has 5, uh, 1600 Shield Max Health, requiring Starship Design Rank 4. Okay, and then just for cowling, the Hope Tech Cap A port mid version here. You can cycle through these versions uh, by hitting Z. And you can also cycle the variants as well by hitting the left and right arrow keys. We're going to use a Deimos bumper for cowling on either side of these key components right there. And then just to create the sort of look that the uh, cockpit comes out at a diagonal, even though it doesn't. <laughs> We're going to use the Deimos bumper port 4. And it fits along with the Nova cowling inside of this uh, one module space, but two bumpers would not. Two Nova cowlings would, if you would rather have a Nova cowling over here instead, but I think this creates the diagonal look for the eye. Uh, of this uh, cockpit connection over here, okay? Then we're going to take the Hope Tech Cap A, place it right there, and that is in the fore section of the Stroud Living Quarters. Then we're going to take a Hope Tech Cap A aft and place it behind it. And even though this is not round, it sort of creates that... Uh, raised look that we want for the center of the ship. So you can see the general look of the Millennium Falcon right now, and I just didn't think uh, that that was right. Depending on how you look at it, uh, this is too thin, and the Stroud nose cap C is too thick at the end. But I like the Stroud nose cap C better, so we're going to place those on there. Okay, and this is our pieced together Millennium Falcon up to this point, but now we're going to uh, hit tab. We've got a shield on, we've got no weapons. We're going to accept this build, and then hit tab to get out, and then we are going to fly this ship to the Sol system. So hit your map and then hit tab to go out until you're uh, looking at the different systems. Let's fly down to the Sol system and go to Saturn's moon of Titan and go to the new homestead. That is the current location of Nova Galactic's uh, star yard. 
since their star yard in orbit was uh, taken over by spacers and ecliptic fighting a, a war with each other. Got anything you need to offload? Trade authorities now we're going to go to the ship services technician on New Homestead sure. How about it? and modify the Millennium Falcon so that it has better landing gear because we're going to put a ton more cargo on here. So we're going to delete two, four, six, eight of the landing gear. And then we're going to place uh, in its place, we're going to uh, go to the gear and choose the NG-20 landing gear and cycle to the third version of it, which is the NG-20 landing gear wide. Okay. We're going to hit control G to copy that and place those where the other landing gear were. And that's going to give us 16 lander thrust for the ship. Okay. And we still have warnings that we don't have uh, any weapons on the ship. Uh, but we're going to be cool with that. Because now we're going to fly. Uh, we're going to accept that build. And then we're going to fly to Neon to get the rest of this done. So go to the map, hit tab uh, to get out to the uh, solar systems. And then down into the right there is the Voli system. We're going to choose uh, Voli Alpha and then roll around to uh, Neon. We're not going to go to Neon Core, we're going to go to Neon Landing Area. Little bit of time on the loading screen here, and we're going to get uh, over to the ship technician, which after you exit your ship is just off to the left over here. Ship services. Anything I can help you with? We're going to talk to this gentleman and see what kind of uh, special things with? he's got in stock today. Sure, how about it? We'll press B for the ship builder to modify the Falcon at this point, and then uh, get to it. So we're going to destroy this little uh, White Dwarf 1000 engine. And we're going to place on here the engines that make the look and maneuverability of this particular build of the Falcon. And that is the Poseidon DT-230 engine from Panoptis. It has 34,520 engine thrust. 11,600 maneuvering thrust and requires Starship Design Rank 4. Okay. I'm going to hit Control G and put three versions of that on the back of the Falcon. This is kind of the look uh, of the back of the Falcon. It's, uh, it's engines anyway. So I thought that was great. And these engines give us uh, 100 mobility currently. Um, and a top speed of 130. Okay. So that's pretty good, but we're going to need some more cargo uh, on here. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to roll under here and destroy this uh, Deimos hull. And put it in its place. Some cargo. The Galleon S204 cargo hold from Protectorate Systems. Place one there. And then we'll place one uh, off to the uh, port side of this uh, landing gear here. Galleon S204 cargo hold. And you can also hit Control G and make a copy of that, put it on the other side uh, of the NG-20 landing gear wide. Okay. Including our shielded 
cargo, that gives us 5,000 cargo on this thing. Still at a mobility of 100. So that's pretty good. Now let's go ahead. I don't think I did this, but I'm going to take off one of these gear. And then hit C. See how it says it has too few landing gear now. So we'll need to uh, to have all four of these on the Falcon in order to carry that much cargo and have this much engine power. All right, let's put the weapon systems on. Up here on the top, I'm going to carefully find the scroll bar here and scroll all the way to the bottom. We're a C-class ship, so we want to see what our options are at the very bottom. And we're going to choose the Obliterator 250 uh, ME5 Alpha Turret. That causes 86 hull damage and 86 shield damage. On an automated basis, the things that are within uh, 3,250 meters of you. That's amazing. And that uh, creates also the look of the turret that's in the uh, central portion there uh, of the Millennium Falcon. Now that's, uh, that's generally what the Millennium Falcon had for armaments, but we're going to make sure uh, that this uh, ship is uh, protected with some additional armaments. We're going to put these under the Nova cowling. The first thing that I'm going to put on here, and uh, you better be locked and you better be sure because we're only going to put one, but it may only take one, at 264 hull damage and 264 shield damage, the Adelatl 280C missile launcher from light side. Right next to that, at the additional uh, weapon mounting here, we've got the Obliterator 250. ME5 Auto Alpha Beam, the fire rate of 4, dealing 29 hull damage and 29 shield damage. Then we're going to copy that. Copy that over. We're going to put that over here on the other uh, Nova Cowling. Another Auto Alpha Beam on this side. Okay. And that'll finish off our weapon systems uh, for the Falcon. So we're going to hit C, go into our weapons, and I like left click for the auto alpha beam, right click for the missile launcher, and then since it's automated, we're going to put the auto alpha turret, the obliterator 250 ME5 alpha turret uh, on what would be G. Uh, but it's automated, so we won't have to do that. And so now we've got all systems nominal. Okay, we can close that by hitting escape. And there you have it. Now there's some different options. Uh, certainly, I've seen versions of the uh, Millennium Falcon that use uh, additional cowling here from the top. But when I looked at the ship... Uh, it had sort of a raised ridge here down the center, uh, but it was very thin on these two sides. And I think that the if you use the cowling for under structural and you use the Stroud Cap A for cowling uh, anywhere <clears throat> up here, Sort of creates more of a rounded look uh, for the Millennium Falcon. You could even place it back here where this Nova cowling is if you wanted to. And if you like that better, you know you should do that. I like for my Millennium Falcon. I liked it. Uh, I liked it this way. Thinner in this section right here. We've got a little uh, porthole over here that sort of creates the uh, the look of the um, port side of the Millennium Falcon. On this side, we've got the Pro Docker, and this is where the Docker was, uh, at least on the schematics that I found for the Millennium Falcon. 
uh, was on the starboard side, uh, just above the landing bay. Okay. And then I basically just uh, double clicked on the ship and then found a good color gray. You can use this color gray if you want. I thought it would uh, look better if it was darker. And then you can add that color to your palette uh, just by choosing a color and then accepting that. And then double clicking on the ship again. Now you can use that uh, gray that you've chosen uh, to cho to color the other ones without having to use the slider every time. And I thought that the Falcon looked good with uh, different color grays uh, on the ship. And then you can also, if you wanted to add some sort of charcoal color to it, because the Millennium Falcon sort of looks pieced together cobbled together sometimes, uh, depending on how you look at it. It looks very complex. Uh, so used three different colors on that if you want. Okay. I just can't get enough of it, but I think that we ought to fly it, don't you? So we have a nominal build. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hit exit and accept that. And then we'll exit from the technician here. And uh, I think it looks great from the ground. Um, got that porthole. I, it's it's too bad that we don't have multiplayer because then people could watch uh, from the inside of the ship as you flew it around. There's our uh, coupler for our docking. And then right day, beneath Captain. that. Got this uh, entrance, and I'm just going to hit directly to the cockpit. Dad, have you ever tried Aurora? Uh, uh, well, and we're going to take off and I see how that looks. I think the best part is looking at the engines from the back. So oh, that just looks so much like the Millennium Falcon taking off to me. While we're in space, uh, above Neon, we're probably uh, pretty safe here, patrolled airspace. We're in orbit, Captain. And we're going to uh, modify our distribution, have full power to the engines, and full power to the shields, and then we can still have two in the grav drive. So that's pretty good. Let's, uh, let's test out the speed here. It said that our max speed was uh, 130. So it looks like we're cruising at about 168. That's pretty good. We have a maneuverability of 100, so that's going to be really good for uh, some some dogfighting if we have to, right? And then let's go ahead and hit our booster. See what we get up to. Didn't quite hit 600, uh, but that was pretty good want to use your boost whenever uh, somebody's got missile lock so you can avoid getting hit by the missiles and I think that we ought to go somewhere and uh, find somebody to destroy so let's do that if we can find somebody in the system sometimes there's a ship hovering around somewhere we can go see what this is all about over here Maybe wants to talk to us about our ship's extended warranty. I don't know. Ha, an offering for the great serpent. Maroon zealots. We'll tear that one apart. Uh, tear that one apart. Do we have any other enemies? You mean two that we almost instantly destroyed? No, nah, yeah, um, credits would be appreciated. Of course. Thanks again for the help. Over and out. 
3,600 credits. I think we're probably going to have to find somebody else to fight. That was, uh, that wasn't quite enough, was it? So that was the sensor contact that we found there. Maybe we'll check around uh, Narian. Doesn't look like much going on over here. We can land at uh, Alpha Centauri. And uh, here's a ship. See what they're doing over here. Just, just poking around. And with only two energy in the grav drive, it'll take us about six seconds uh, to jump. You could put more energy into it if you wanted to. I should have just tried to see what the uh, what the turret would do against those guys. Crimson Fleet Spectre. Let's just let this turret tear him apart. That's some pretty good damage from just the turret. Oh, yeah, so the turret, I mean, he was only level 14, but the turret just tore him apart. I didn't shoot at him at all. Uh, so, so pretty good. Oh, and here we have the Deimos Armored Transport. That's why those guys were hanging around. I think we're good. The maneuverability is almost too good on this thing. Pretty quiet in the system. We'll go to uh, Jemison. Land at the spaceport in New Atlantis. Now I'm not sure if we got uh, kind of lucky uh, getting those particular items uh, from the from the neon vendor. One thing that I do know is I had intended. to get the uh, Exterminator 95 ME5 uh, Auto Helion Beam. It has a higher damage per second than the Obliterator um, by about 14 damage per second. But uh, it's obviously very formidable. I'm going to be doing an upcoming uh, award show for the different uh, ship parts, and uh, I think that'll be fun. Um, I've done some math, and uh, we're going to talk about for the shields, reactor, grav drive, engine, cockpit, cargo, weapons, and fuel. Uh, who are the winners, and what company do you think will come out ahead with most awards for those things. Guess we'll find out. Check the mission board. Crimson Fleet Spectre. That's what we've got. Okay, and from here, if we're not overburdened, we can just go uh, directly to the quest by hitting L, and then R to get to that system. That's going to take us 248 helium-3 to get there, uh, but we have 650, I think. Yeah, so it said right on my screen 650. Of course it did. Okay, here we are in the system. We're going to put one more in our engine. 
two back in the grav drive. We could really use your help. I'm sure. But I'm hunting a ship right now. I'm sorry. There goes the Falcon. Weapons locked. Time for some fun. Maybe we should hit this guy with our missile system before it's all over. Couldn't. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess you want to be well protected. Seems like we are. Let's Got get out there. 2,403 credits from that guy. And we're in an asteroid field. We're at home here, aren't we? You can use your uh, lasers or your missiles to destroy these things as well. See what it might have for a mineral deposit. Iron. Use our missile systems. The Millennium Falcon is at home in the asteroid field. Doesn't cause much damage to the shields when you bump into one, but... And of course, if you've seen some of my previous videos, sometimes I'm a little overzealous when I'm attacking ships and I can bump into them as well. But you can, uh, you can modify your position uh, and, you know, have fun flying through the asteroid field if that's something that you want to do. Alright, I really enjoyed the build. I hope that, uh, I hope that you enjoyed it too. You can uh, make the Millennium Falcon uh, your own uh, with the different cowling, uh, coloration, all that sort of thing. Um, you can also uh, place... The Millennium Falcon has uh, a section here in the front uh, where it is normally held all the way out beyond this area here. So you could put a habitation or something inside of here uh, if you wanted to. Uh, if you didn't uh, want that much maneuverability, you could also put cargo there, I suppose. Right now we just have a little porthole and uh, cowling for the Millennium Falcon um, as it appears uh, without this section right here. This is a detachable section. Uh, that normally goes here. You'll see Lando Calrissian's ship has that section uh, still in, uh, attached to his ship. So it comes out to much more of a point. Alright? And this particular uh, ship is part of a class of uh, freighters. And I'm missing that information right now, but it's a part of a class of freighters. Uh, but the Millennium Falcon and Lando Calrissian's uh, ship are the only ones that we end up seeing uh, in the uh, in the canon movies, as far as I uh, as far as I can remember. So, well, thanks for joining me on Quest AL TV for the Millennium Falcon build. Um, and make sure that if you haven't uh, checked me out over on my uh, live stream. Uh, that you check the schedule, find a time that's good for you, and come and say hi. Uh, pop into the chat and say, hey, I saw you on YouTube. I saw some of your ship builds, and uh, pop over and uh, watch me play some of these other games uh, that I'm playing. So I'm going to pop over to the scheduled end screen. You can see all my social media. Hit me up with uh, any ship builds that you have. Uh, show me what you've built and or what you've done in these games, and I'll be playing uh, Baldur's Gate most Fridays. I think tonight we're going to jump over to Ark Survival Ascended, uh, playing Starfield, of course, and ship builds for YouTube. Minecraft and Valheim with Teetering Turtle, my companion in the Valheim realm for Valheim progression. So I hope you enjoy those things and have a great day. We'll see you next time on Quest ALTV.